Would it be possible if we change the title of all of this from Christmas season to holiday season? Because I have a woke agenda. Yes. Um... <laughs> the Wrestling Life. Hey, everybody, it's the Thanksgiving Spectacular of the Wrestling Life. It's episode 392. We're at the end of November of 2024, and I'm Ethan. I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. A little something uh, different going on this week, and that is uh, uh, we've bombastically named this the thanksgiving spectacular every year and it's now the 11th thanksgiving spectacular <laughs> that we've done and really the thanksgiving spectacular my humble opinion uh, not all that spectacular <laughs> but I think we try it's part of the bit <laughs> right we try we break from talking uh, uh modern uh current day present day uh timely newsly uh wrestling and we talk about something from the past so what did you have uh set up you put in all the work on this and i just uh sat back and was like yeah okay uh right yeah uh uh-huh, sure and that's how uh that goes and and uh and maybe at some point i'll break in with a hmm <laughs> yes so hmm, i see, see. Yeah, so my my thought this year um, was that uh, we let someone do all of the uh, the work for us for the most part, and we went to the wonderful uh, tr- trivia site. It's sort of like Trivia Wikipedia, I think, where people could just make quizzes. It's called Sporkle. Or actually, one of these is from FunTrivia.com, apparently, which may be all a right. spin-off of, of, of Sporkle. Of I guess, I don't know. But okay, oh, no, I was wrong. Sporkle was another one that I chose not to do. Because that was just like a, a a a name, and then you guessed. This one is like in the in the form of questions. So, all right. So, yes, this is funtrivia.com. Uh, my other gimmick. There's 20 questions between the two quizzes here. So, uh, we're gonna read the question. We're gonna see if we can guess the correct answer, and then if 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 that point, we can we can maybe riff a little on the gimmick and say like, did this have any? any chance of being anything or was the old man uh, out to lunch? So without any further ado, I will start with uh, the fun trivia.com. My other gimmick trivia quiz. And uh, number one, Jim, the anvil Neidhart is best known as one half of the tag team, the heart foundation with Bret Hart. However, he's, he's not as well known in a failed gimmick where he wrestled under a mask for a very short time. What name did Dinehart go by as this Max wrestler? Are these uh, multiple choice or are these just fill in the answer? So the first one is is uh, fill in the answer, and then the second one is multiple choice. It's just interestingly, huh? Well, I think this is pretty clear. Uh, Jim the Evil Dinehart was who? That's correct. Let's make sure. All right, we got it right. All right, so That's... we are uh, <laughs> we're one for one. We're revisiting sure. the past. We're discussing uh, workers who were famous for one gimmick and then had other gimmicks. And this quiz will uh, will enlighten us. Yeah. In the interest of Neidhart being who, why is Neidhart still keeping a job if he's not going to be Jim Neidhart? Well, the story that. Bruce Pritchard tells is that uh, Stu Hart would call up Vince <laughs> and beg him to take Anvil back. You Anvil, handle him. Anvil would get into some kind of trouble on out on the road, and he would get fired. And then, uh, and then Stu would call and ask for Vince to take the big <laughs> rhino back. There you go. And did you know, this is a fun fact I learned from, I know we like to pretend we're the only one, but another wrestling radio show, we'll say. What? Yeah. Uh, say There can't be another wrestling podcast. Right. No, we're the first and only there still. But uh, that uh, Jerry McDevitt met Vince through Jim Neidhart. I did not know that. That's correct. I think I think <laughs> when Jim, Jim had an incident either on a plane or something, uh-huh. he got caught with steroids or in an airport or something <laughs> and... 
somehow Jerry McDevitt was his lawyer. And through that, Jerry met Vince and it was just love at first sight. What do you know about that? Yeah, there's, a, there's our fun fact. All right, on to question number two here. After some success in WCW and a brief stint in ECW, Steve Austin finally made it to the WWE in 1995. Boy, they really, this person's in love with himself writing this question. Mm. Uh, before becoming the beer swilling, bird flipping, butt kicking redneck everyone came <laughs> to know and love, Austin was managed by Ted DiBiase and was handed the million dollar championship belt. Oddly, he rarely, if ever, spoke. By what name did Austin go by before becoming Stone Cold? I mean, you can't. <laughs> I was like, this is like the most famous <laughs> example of this on earth. So if you. All right. He's the ringmaster. Correct. Um, funny because Brett's whole thing was like, uh, it was like, get this guy in here and he'll be a great feud for me. And then they brought him in and. He feuded with like Savio Vega and didn't talk. <laughs> yeah. Well, Steve Austin uh, was a wrestler in a sports entertainment company mm-hmm. who somehow got them to. Um, he got there when the old man was still somewhat malleable and would listen. All right, so and an interesting uh, twist of fate here. Starting at question three, they now do they are now are multiple choice for the next couple. So this doesn't seem like the highest quality quiz. I agree. <laughs> As a vehicle for conversation, it's fine. Yeah, and it's it's accomplishing what we needed to accomplish. As a quiz, oh, this is the drizzles. Oh, that's D minus D minus for quiz trending towards an F. Mm. You know, C C plus maybe for just letting us remember some guys and some gimmicks so sure we're gonna remember some guys for sure absolutely all right number three dustin runnels grew up in a wrestling family did he as as his father is the legendary dusty Rhodes. dustin debuted as himself in wwe as well as in wcw (coughs) period when dustin returned to to the wwe he re-debuted wearing a gold bodysuit platinum blonde wig and entered the ring with gold confetti falling as the enigmatic gold dust after years of success in wwe success mm, i I mean he's a mid-card guy and then vince got bored with the gimmick like a year in but sure uh after years of success he returned to wcw and was set to debut as someone who stalked children Thankfully, this gimmick was dropped as quickly as it debuted. What was the name of Dustin's new gimmick? And the choices are, now that we suddenly have multiple (laughs) choice, uh, was he called Nightmare? Was he called The Natural? Was he called Seven? Or was he called Black Rain? Now, that's a little tricky because he went by two of those names. But this is, we're looking for post-Gold Dust WCW run Dustin here. He went by three of them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, this is seven. Yes, correct. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand what the gimmick was supposed to be. Um, this is where he painted his face all white and Ooh. wore the uh, Joker hat, right? From Batman the Animated <laughs> Series. <laughs> you have like the big round, like borderline sombrero looking thing. Yeah. Is this so? Is that an example? Because I know very quickly he comes out on a promo and was like, "I'm not doing this gimmick. It sucks." Was that like this start under like Kevin's was this like a Kevin Sullivan, Kevin Nash booking regime? And then when Russo comes in, he's like, no, we're going to have you go on TV and say this gimmick sucks. Sounds like the opposite to me. I mean, one sounds like something Vince Russo would dream up. Right. (laughs) And the other sounds like something that wrestling people would come in and say, no, stop doing that. (laughs) Um. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but, but I, I I guess yeah it's, but definitely feels like that's one of it was on both sides of a WCW regime change right oh that's fair. that's quite possible yeah um yeah I don't remember there there may be specifics uh in one of the death of WCW books I don't remember but yeah interesting all right on to number four here it's before becoming the Samoan bulldozer Umenga uh Umenga oh sorry that's not a period yeah before becoming the Samoan Bulldozer, Umenga was known as Jamal and was one half of a tag team with Rosie who were used by Raw GM Eric Bischoff to attack certain wrestlers, including crashing Billy and Chuck's commitment ceremony on SmackDown. 
what was the name of this tag team? Uh, right. Was it too, was it too cool? Was it Samoan gangsters? Was it Samoan SWAT team? Or was it the ant the the correct answer? Three minute warning. <laughs> this is tough, but I'm going to pick <laughs> the correct answer. <laughs> Uh, yes, that was in fact that was not a trick. No, that was in fact the correct answer. I mean that I do feel yeah, like it's Jay Leno. It's just playing a trick. <laughs> just playing a trick. It's not mean based though. <laughs> Speaking of Jay Leno, I mean this is going to be like a week out of date by the time this airs. But what, ha- what happened to that guy's face this week? Yeah, I hit my head on a rock. <laughs> Fell down a hill and hit his head on a rock. Yeah, it was outside <laughs> Pittsburgh at the Hampton Inn, and he had to take a shortcut or was he going to walk for dinner? And, and, yeah, I was just going to get a burger and fries for dinner. <laughs> Jay, I know, I know you famously don't spend your 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 Tonight Show money. That's in the bank. That's no, it's a regular guy. That's right. He's a regular guy. He's got an old truck, but maybe maybe spend money to say it like the Ritz or <laughs> or you know. Yeah. Problem I, is, problem is, I'm America's best friend, and <laughs> I'm outside Pittsburgh, and I'm doing uh, stand up comedy outside Pittsburgh, and it's like there's not a Ritz Carlton anywhere near Pittsburgh. Sure, sure. Well, Jay, thanks for stopping by. We know your time's precious, so we really, Ethan and I really appreciate you stopping by the pod. No, I, 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 I. Wow, Jay Leno. <laughs> that was a big get for us. Yeah, what do you know about that? <laughs> and moving on from that to number five on our list. Uh, before Al Snow picked up a mannequin head and started talking to it, Ugh. in his first run in the WWE, Snow went through three terrible gimmicks. One was the masked superhero Avatar. Another was the super ninja Shinobi. I don't even think I knew about that one. So that's something this quiz taught me. And the third had him team up with Marty Jannetty to form the New Rockers. By what name did Al Snow go by in this third incarnation? And the options are Dwayne Gill, uh, (laughs) Steve Moore, Al Sarvin, or Leaf Cassidy. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to pull Cassidy, but I remember Leaf for some reason. And that is the correct answer. That again, is that just like we're we feel bad for Janetti, and <laughs> so we throw him on there with a guy that can with a kid who can kind of go and let him, you know, wrestle on superstars or whatever. I I guess so. Yeah, this is one of the dozens of times that uh, Marty Janetti, the only guy who I think who was hired and fired more than Nightheart. <laughs> Um, Jannetty Jan- gets around, right? Because he's in he has a WCW stint too, doesn't he? At least one, yeah, at least one. I want to <laughs> say he's the guy who gets tapped out very quickly before the 1004 holds Jericho promo. That's possible. I who was in the match with uh Bulldog when Bulldog uh broke his back on the on the warrior trap door? That, that might have been for some reason that's I think think that's Janetti, but I could it could not okay. be Janetti. Uh but yeah. Weird. <laughs> but yes. A guy that just for some reason ping ponged around. I guess you always need a good hand who who when he wasn't doing crack was <laughs> <laughs> Well well let's talk about Al Snow here sure. too because um it's just a legendary fake intellectual. <laughs> um There's a clip going around that I've gotten into arguments with strangers on the internet about Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of him explaining the difference between what what's art and like what's commercially successful and the difference. And I don't I don't know what point he thinks he's making. (laughs) Yeah, there's always two that I see. It's that same. It's a kayfabe commentaries interview, I think. Right. There's the one where he he goes ranting and raving about how the best match is the one that draws the most money. Right. And then right. the second one is that no, and then there's like one he has about like Dave Meltzer and wrestling reporters about how like criticism isn't, isn't, uh, isn't uh, worthwhile. And if you've never, like one of the classic, like if you've never done this, you should be able to, you shouldn't right. be criticizing me or something like this. And you don't understand this business. If you've never laced him up type of thing. Right. That's Al Snow in a nutshell. Um, always had a reputation as like good hand, good worker, and mm-hmm. now runs, owns, and runs OVW. I think to varying degrees of success, but <laughs> I mean the lights are still on. So he got like two TV shows made. <laughs> yeah, 
My, got like, my, you got like a one season Apple TV thing, and then I think, or maybe it was just a documentary or something. I think that yeah, was on Netflix or something. Yeah. Also, Al is um, Al always had the reputation of a good hand, and uh, I'm not saying it's totally unwarranted. I'm just saying I've seen better hands. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen better. I've seen better hands that have made a more than two decade career out of being a good hand than 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 Al Snow. I just I don't know. A total total disconnect. He and Foley did a comedy match on SmackDown once, a comedy mm-hmm. hardcore match where Foley like rolls a bowling ball into his nuts. <laughs> uh one of the better comedy matches I've ever seen, but like way below Mick Foley to be doing <laughs> a hardcore match with Al Snow. Agreed. Anyway, I don't know. Uh yeah, I'm not an Al Snow guy. He he is a guy who has very high opinion or like really tries to hold court with his opinions, considering that as is as as the famous clip from that kayfabe commentary goes, that if if uh, the best match is the one that draws the be- uh, the most money, is it fair to say that Al Snow has never had a good match in his career? Correct. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, let's let's move yeah. on and uh, yeah. get to number six, which is now a true or false for some reason. And, uh, <laughs> number six here. <laughs> true or false, before Mick Foley developed his three faces of Foley, he wrestled under the name of Jack Foley. Uh, that's correct. Yeah, there's he's like a job. He's a job guy in on some WWF shows, right? And, yeah. In the 80s, the superstars in the 80s are wrestling challenge in the 80s. Mm-hmm. It ruins my life by the way that we don't have uh and i know that there's some copyright issue with the phrase superstars of wrestling or whatever but Mm -hmm. we don't have very much wrestling challenge or superstars from the late 80s on on peacock or the network it's like that would that would really hit the spot for me and that would be a game changer because that's where like most of the stuff that people remember like was happening on those shows because there wasn't i mean i guess that they would get get replayed on like the 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 usa like tuesday night titans show or whatever but right prime time wrestling right yeah but like yeah. you know a lot of stuff was happening on those so if you if you wanted to like go back and really get a flavor for the time like that's where you find it on those types of shows right yeah yeah i would really like those shows to uh to end up on the network someday yeah they oh, before it was a, a peacock joint there was that like hidden gems thing and they had started to put up like some weirder stuff. But yeah, like you said, that probably doesn't apply to like copyright issue stuff. So yeah. Yeah. They, they, I think they slowed a lot of that also because it's like me and two other people are looking for that stuff. And most, most people are just watching uh raw replays and pay-per-view replays, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do have that. They they have a the, like WWE Vault YouTube channel now, which uploads some like I would say some more off the wall stuff. Yeah, people really love that. Um, yeah, there's like they they stream they stream like a whole like I think it was like an '87 Great American Bash tour show a couple of weeks ago or something or Halloween Havoc. I think it was whatever the first WCW show that ever had that name on the banner. Um, right. I think they streamed that. And people were going crazy for that. So. Yeah. yeah, they've 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 clearly got the footage. I guess it's just a matter of will they pay someone to actually go through it and like edit it and digitize it and right put it up somewhere. And is that a worthy expense for them? But right, they spent a lot of they spent a lot of time and money doing that. You know, a decade ago or whatever. And I think they just decided, look, as it <laughs> as we need it, we'll do it for this older footage. But there's just there's not a lot of demand for it. Yeah. All right, we're back to multiple choice for question seven, thankfully. Naturally. <laughs> or Paul Michael Levesque, uh, better known today as the bald bitch named Triple H, married the boss's daughter. I added that part. Uh, and became when he married the boss's daughter became the game, he wrestled under the name Jean-Paul Levesque while in WCW. He also wrestled under another name while in WCW. What was that name? And the choices are the goon, Terror Rising, Das Wunderkind, or Hunter Hearst Helmsley? Well, this is obviously the second one. I forget <laughs> what it was. Yeah, what you said already. But yeah, Terror Terra Rising. Yes. Uh, 
that he was just a job guy because when he's John Paul, that's when he teams with Regal, right? That's how that's it's why, one of the blue bloods. Yeah, that's why Big Bill still has a Big Bill Regal still has a job today. And as a reminder, he acted honorably when <laughs> when he was briefly employed with another <laughs> wrestling company. Rovert calls him uh, <laughs> British Road Dog. <laughs> Oh, love it. All right, moving on to number eight here. Tito Santana had mm. an illustrious career, including winning the WWE Intercontinental and Tag Team Championships. But toward the end of his career, Tito was repackaged into a short-lived persona. And the options are <laughs> El Dandy, Super Crazy, El Matador, Super Calo. This is El Matador, and it was... um a really frustrating uh, time in the WWF when Vince McMahon decided to rebrand uh, Tito Santana as El Matador and Ricky Steamboat <laughs> as the dragon. And it's like, well, maybe occasionally, eventually the commentators would uh, acknowledge this, the same person you've been mm-hmm. watching for the last 15 years, <laughs> but sometimes they wouldn't. And so it's like, oh, this, this El Matador is really, uh, it's like, dude, this youngster. Been, yeah. And it's like, I've been watching Tito Santana my entire <laughs> life. He's really good. <laughs> like, all six years of my life or whatever at this point, I've been watching Tito Santana my whole life. He's so good. Why are you acting like this is a different human being? That is a weird thing because yes, if, if you at, at that young age were able to notice that, like, at, like, <laughs> It's not like they painted his face or or he wore a mask or something. Like it's just Tito Santana in a matador costume. In in pastel colors, yes. <laughs> Unbelievable. Is this around I think there's is this the time Tony Atlas is Saba Simba too, or is that later? Yeah, it's about the same time. Is that one famously like his first night in Piper's on commentary? He's like, What are you talking about? That's Tony Atlas. <laughs> <laughs> And Vince is like, yes, but he's uh he's a uh, he's a uh, he's embraced his heritage. I'm like, oh. uh, <laughs> so terrible. He goes by Sama Simba now. <laughs> uh, awful. Uh anyway, speaking of awful, before Mark Calloway, better known as the Undertaker, started wreaking havoc in the WWE, mm-hmm. he had another persona while wrestling in WCW. And what was that persona? Was it Texas Red? <laughs> Master of Pain, The Punisher, or Mean Mark Callis? See, he wrestled under all of those, though. But I think Mark Callis was the WCW one. The others were just like indies. That is correct. See, like I feel like that would have been a better... Not that I don't know why I'm trying to Monday morning quarterback this, <laughs> this quiz that was probably made by AI or... An eight-year-old. Yeah. Or yeah, or someone in the English is in their <laughs> first language. But I'm like, they should yeah. all be that. They should all be people with that had four or five gimmicks. Right. And then you try to trip us up by being like, hey, no, we want the gimmick from this specific time. Like, do you understand the timeline of when they were what character? Right. But that's not what they did. All right. You're, number you're 10. thinking like an excellent quiz maker. That's right. I <laughs> that's that's one of my special skills. Yeah. Uh, number 10 here. Uh, Steve Lombardi has been employed by the WWE for many years. Can I? Too can many. I? He no longer is. He hasn't been for like a decade. But yeah. do you um remember? Or I'm I cut you off and interrupt <laughs> because I saw Steve Lombardi pop up on social media this week with his wife of forty years. What? <laughs> yeah, and I was like, I was told growing up always not growing up, but as a younger man, Steve Lombardi is gay. And Steve Lombardi has a wife of 40 years, apparently. Yeah. I was shocked to find that out this week. That That is genuinely, <laughs> like, kind of earth-shattering to me. Right? Like, Steve Lombardi, he, like, he, like, uh, he was a 1980s gay. <laughs> <laughs> in that, in that he, like, plucked his eyebrows. You know what I mean? Uh-huh, uh-huh. A metrosexual, as the term was for... In, in the early 2000s well i it, it kind of it's something different than that which is why i specified 80s gay okay. because <laughs> you wouldn't just like uh you wouldn't just like manicure the eyebrows it's like guys would just 
they would completely take the eyebrows off. I see. As like a signal. Huh. Anyway, I remember the Brooklyn Brawler not having eyebrows and being like, what's up with that? And then it being, it being explained to me, well, the Brooklyn Brawler is gay. <laughs> I saw a photo of him this week with his, 40, his wife for 40 years. That's all I'm saying. Well, you know, perhaps like John Moxley and Renee Paquette, they've added a third, you know, in, in times past. Maybe so. None of my business. Exactly. But anyway, <laughs> Steve Lombardi has been employed, not anymore. During his time, he has been Kamala's handler, Kimchi, Doink the Clown. We're back to no uh, multiple choice. We're just, <laughs> we're just answering the question. We're winging it. Doink the Clown, but he's best known as the Brooklyn Brawler. However, in 1994, Lombardi took on a per- another personality in response to the Major League Baseball strike. And this character's name was... Abe Knuckleball Schwartz. That is correct. So we were 10 for 10, believe it or not. Uh, well, Look at us go. <laughs> on the first quiz, we are quiz masters and, and certified geniuses. What do you know about that? All right, just 10 more of these to go. And sociologists as well, as we discuss the ins and outs of Steve Lombardi's life. That's right. And the, the overarching uh, ways to signal uh, your sexuality in, in, in different eras of, uh, yeah. of America. Right. There's, we're learning a lot this time. And now we are on to a second quiz. This is also from funtrivia.com. It is called My Other Gimmick Part 2 Trivia Quiz. Beautiful. Um, all right. Starting with question number one. The early to mid-90s were a time for many gimmicks. They sure were. In the then WWF, everybody seemed to have some sort of pr- profession. They were occupations, right? Yes. There were plumbers, trash men, and even magicians. One such profession was played by Glenn Jacobs, who who you know and love, disagree, as The Undertaker's younger brother, Kane. What character did Mayor Jacobs play from 1995 to 1996? And the options are, we have options again. The mm. Goon, T.L. Hopper, Duke the Dumpster Drossy, or Isaac Yankum, DDS? He was uh, Isaac Yankum. The other three were... Uh... <laughs> One was one was Tommy Rich. One was <laughs> uh, they brought in a bunch of good hands mm-hmm. from the uh, from the south and gave them all the worst gimmicks of all time. <laughs> because Vince couldn't like cover up his hatred for Southern wrestling, right? Like, yeah, yeah, that uh, had to be what it was. It was just like, look, we need to make some young guys here. We need to make some young stars, and uh, we need our under a card to learn how to work. So we're going to bring in veterans, <laughs> veterans, Southern wrestlers <laughs> to teach these guys how to work. And we'll, we're going to put them with, with the goon and TL Hopper and Dr. Tom Pritchard. And they're going to learn how to work. And Hey, it's arguably worked out a lot better in the performance center. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there is something to the idea of learning how to wrestle by wrestling in front of people. <laughs> Yeah, there is. <laughs> there is <something> Rather <laughs> than doing calisthenics in an empty <laughs> warehouse. Uh, while, while Albert yells at you. Yeah. Uh, all right, our next one. Uh, believe it or not, even Andre the Giant had a gimmick. In 1986, Andre was kayfabe suspended from the WWF. Not long after, a team of rather large Japanese wrestlers called the Machines showed up in the WWF, managed by the now babyface Captain Lou. These yeah. men were called the Super Machine, uh, which was Bill Eady of, uh, of Demolition. Right. And which machine, who was Andre under the math? Was it Crusher Machine? Was it Animal Machine? Was it Giant Machine? Or was it Mammoth Machine? He was Giant Machine. Correct. And this is a gimmick that I need to, I still need to have fully explained to me. <laughs> Like I understand, I, I understand the idea. It's like okay, well, we would take our our established draws, and we put them under the this very specific mask. And it's like you know, it's not like a Midnight Rider thing where you know that we know that you know, and we're winking at each other. Right. It's like it was like, but it was kind of like that. It's like okay, we have the giant machine, 
which is uh, Andre. And he's just uh, dressed like Andre, but wearing <laughs> wearing a mask. Right. And then we have Hulk Machine, which is Hogan, who's dressed like Hogan, but wearing the mask. It's like, I, I don't know. It was a, it was explained to me one time as like it was a Japanese gimmick from the 80s. They tried here and it just didn't work here. <laughs> But it's like you can translate. Yeah, I feel like though, like maybe if they had explained it better, it would have translated. Or I don't know. I just don't. I don't know. I don't know. I remember yeah. seeing. I remember seeing the clamshell VHS uh, boxes in the video store, video rental store, as a child, and they would have a uh, giant machine or Hulk machine on the cover, and I was just baffled. <laughs> like, why is he dressed like that? Why is Andre wearing a mask? Anyway, yeah, like like to your point, it only kind of works if it's like you're foiling a heel's plan and the heel is on TV, like ranting and raving, like right, yeah, like the Midnight Rider, or right, like theoretically what Mister America was supposed to be for, yeah, for the Hulkster. But yeah, that's fine. All right, moving on to the next one. One of the most popular tag teams of the Attitude Era was the New Age Outlaws. The team consisted of Badass Billy Gunn and the Road Dog. The duo, why is this must be AI? The duo <laughs> won the WWF slash WWE tag team championship six times, including once in like 2015. Uh, before this, before this, Road Dog was the real Double J, who was the real singer behind Jeff Jarrett's song "My Baby Tonight." Right. In a lipstick controversy, Billy yeah. Gunn, after leaving the Smoking Guns and his kayfabe brother Bart, fell under the tutelage of the Honky Tonk Man. And became this gimmick who would end up nothing more than a low card jobber. Well, that's that's mean. You need to port Bill Gunn. Very mean. The rockabilly, of course. Yes, that is correct. The other options were the one Billy Gunn, the singing cowboy, and Honky Jr. And honestly, Honky Jr. is pretty good. That would have been better. <laughs> you gave Billy Gunn the Elvis hair and he was Honky Jr. You know, I want I want Honky Talk Man Jr. in wrestling today. It could work. <laughs> Let's just do it. <laughs> is there is there an equivalent pop culture like singer that people dress up as now the way people still dress up as Elvis in like Las Vegas? I mean, I don't feel like anything impacts the culture the way that anything did 60 years ago. But sure. maybe there was a time when Lady Gaga, okay. I don't know, where people would dress up. I don't I don't know. I think people like wear specific clothes to Taylor Swift shows, but mm-hmm. I don't think they like dress up like her. Right. I, I, yeah, I can't think of a. I th- can't think of a good comp. Right. Nobody's nobody's dressing up like Post Malone on Hollywood Boulevard. I don't think. Yeah. Interesting. Just rockabilly. What do you know? <laughs> Honky Junior. <laughs> Honky Junior. I have a, a new. I have, <laughs> I have a new white whale. <laughs> <laughs> we could have had it all. Truly. All right, number five here. Uh, solo or four here, sorry. Solo fa, Fatu, who you know mm. as Rashik, Rikishi, had or Rashiki, a, had an interesting career. Sure did. Being <laughs> being part of the famous Anawai family that produced the Wild Samoans, the Usos, Roman Reigns, Yumenga, Yokozuna, Tonga Kid, and The Rock. He started his gimmicks usually were of his Samoan heritage, like Rikishi. Great sentence structure. Right. But from the late night, late summer 1996 until early 1998, he adopted an unusual gimmick that was far from the Samoan roots. He was managed by Bob Backlund and the Iron Sheik. Uh, was that Doom, Fantasio, Santa Claus, or the Sultan? I mean, the Sultan's the only one of those that even makes any sense. And right. it's the correct answer. Right. And yeah. Santa Claus was somebody else. Fantasio, I think, is the magician who's on that one show. Yes. I don't was Doom a guy? I don't I don't I don't know Doom. No, Doom was a tag team with Ron Simmons and Butch Reed. Oh, that's right. Okay. So <laughs> managed by Teddy Long. Right. It's not even a WWF gimmick. What are we doing here? I don't know. Teddy with Teddy Long who got on steroids just to manage Doom for <laughs> For a month. <laughs> Listen, it's <laughs> never too late to get on steroids. No, it's not. And I think that's a lesson we could all we could all take in stride. Yeah, if, if you take one piece away from this Thanksgiving spectacular, it's that maybe you should try steroids. 
Teddy Long tells a great story too on one of those K-pop commentaries or one of those shoot interview tapes about being in a hot tub in Corpus Christi, Texas, as the Bella Twins were in there naked. Look, I'm just saying it sounds like a fun night for for Tony. It sure did. <laughs> he still he still remembered the story, you know, 15 years <laughs> later or whatever. All right. <laughs> On our next question, we have uh, number number five here. Kevin Nash reached stardom in the WWF as Diesel, where he was a triple crown champion. Well. Then, after a, leave, a stardom, a relative term, considering the co- company almost went under, but uh, it's not all his fault, I guess. <laughs> then, after leaving uh, for WCW, he, along with Scott Hall and Hulk Hogan, changed the face of wrestling when they formed the NWO. I'm mm. running out of steam here. <laughs> Before all of that, <laughs> sure. Nash went through a couple of bad gimmicks in WCW as well. Dozens. One, one of those was the mob ripoff character named Vinny Vegas. The other is known for a more ridiculous, known as one of the more ridiculous gimmicks in wrestling history. This is yeah. Oz with the green cape. Yes. <laughs> all right, I'll save you some reading. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The other options were Big Daddy Cool, the Sultan of SWAT, and the Final Solution. Final Solution, isn't that is that Alex Wright? Who was that? Yeah, that was Alex Wright, and they quickly, I think, realized they had to stop calling him that. Yeah, it was not a. <laughs> That's why they marked the uh, elimination chamber as no way out in Germany. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yikes. Yeah. Uh, Dolph Ziggler has had a very mm. successful career, according mm. to you. He's a two-time world champion. a lot of money. It's true. Multiple-time tag team champion, U.S. Intercontinental, and even he won. And he even won Money in the Bank. But before that, he was saddled with a couple of bad gimmicks. First, he was the caddy to Chavo Guerrero's Kerwin White, and when Chavo came to his senses on that, he was repackaged. I don't think Chavo had any say in that. No. But when he was repackaged, when Chavo's uncle died uh, and Chavo went back to being Chavo, uh, the ch- Nick uh, Dolph Ziggler was, was put into the cheerleader gimmick known as the Spirit Squad. Uh, was he Johnny, Kenny, Mikey, or Nikki? Are you kidding me? <laughs> was Nick Nemeth, Nikki, <laughs> Mikey, Kenny, or John? Yeah. I mean, come on now. Yeah. Kerwin White, uh, forgotten, horrible gimmick. Yeah, that's that era where, like, that's around the time when he tries to have a Japanese guy named Hirohito, isn't it? (laughs) Like, that same kind of era. He's just, he is complete, like, 2003 to 2006, Vince, is just, it might be the most insane until, like, 2021, Vince. Right. He was acting crazy within the parameters of what had already been established as, as his character. <laughs> we didn't know about the trafficking yet. Right. Yeah. All right. Next one here. The late Scott Hall had an illustrious, if not frenetic career. All right. He performed in all three major territories of WWF, WCW, and AWA, and won titles in all three. Uh, WCW wasn't a territory, but that's fine. <laughs> his most famous gimmicks, his most famous gimmicks was in the WWF when he was Razor Ramon, yeah. then under his own name in WCW when he helped form when he helped formed the NWO with Kevin Nash and Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Yeah. But before he before he joined the WWF and became the bad guy, Paul's first in WCW, he was part of a stable called The Diamond Mine with Vinny Vegas and Scotty Flamingo. And what was his name in that stable? Was he the Red Rooster? Was he Max Moon? They gave up on this one. <laughs> was he the Diamond Stud or was he Beaver Cleavage? Again, you're not even picking other like 91 <laughs> WCW gimmicks. Like, Right. Yeah, he was the Diamond Stud. All right. I'm disappointed. In, <laughs> in the... they, they gave like there was this again, D minus. Now we're at F because you just kind of gave up. Like there was there was kind of a theme to the other guesses on some of these. Uh, you you can uh, you can. Yeah, I think I I lobby that we uh, the first quiz is is gets a D and then this one gets an F. Agreed. Agreed. All right. 
All right, so I have a couple more here. Uh, one, Scott Levy is best known as the brooding alternative music-inspired Edgar yes. Allan Poe quoting Raven. Yes. This is where he achieved the most notoriety, winning titles in WWF, WC... What did he win in WWF? Oh, he's the hardcore champion, probably. I guess they count that, yeah. WCW and ECW. But before his first... Before this, his, before this, his first gimmick in the WWF... <laughs> was the complete opposite of Raven. He wore preppy clothes, carried a polo mallet, and managed the Quebecers. I didn't know he managed the Quebecers. That's funny. Uh, to the WWF tag team titles. What was the name of this preppy character? Was it Clarence Mason? Again, bad. Mm. because <laughs> the, Okay, Clarence Mason, Kerwin White, Harvey Whippleman, or the correct answer, Johnny Polo. Johnny, he was Johnny Polo. See, because like, was... I don't know that I could have pulled Johnny Polo if they had given me other like fake preppy like sounding gimmick names. I mean, Raven had many of them. He was Johnny Polo. He was Scotty Flamingo. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He was, I think there's a Scotty Levy or some riff on his real name. Mm -hmm. He went by also. Yeah. All right. And then there's two left, which I technically uh, saved for last out of order because you have to submit your answers all at once. And I genuinely don't know the answer to these two. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. One is all right. Barry Darso was another wrestler shadowed with bad gimmicks, but he but he also had a couple of good ones. Yeah, one of the good ones was as Smash and Demolition. And yeah, as Smash, he would win the WWF tag titles three times. Correct. During his time with the NWA territory, when it was known as Jim Crockett Promotions, Barry had a successful run with another gimmick, winning several titles. What was Barry's other successful gimmick? Was it this was Crusher Khrushchev? Okay. <laughs> There's also Blacktop Bully, Repo Man, and Barry Hole and Mondarso, which are all his act were also his actual gimmicks. Correct. See, like they did it right on that question, which makes me angrier that they they, phoned <laughs> they it mailed it on the other. Yeah. 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 He was Crusher Khrushchev, though. He was uh, kind of a kind of a pushed guy. Yeah. All right. And then uh, our last one here. The late Del Wilkes is best known for the mast waving flat mast flag waving patriot. But before darning the Stars and Stripes, Wilkes was a part of the AWA and won the Tag Team Championship alongside Paul Diamond. His gimmick at this time was a law enforcement themed gimmick, and the choices mm. are Detective Crockett, The Trooper, Sergeant Shriver, or The Big Boss Man. I'm going with The Trooper, but I actually legitimately don't 100% know for sure. All right, so let's see. That is... It's great pod. Ooh, okay. All right. That is incorrect. It was Sergeant Shriver. Apparently. What do you know? Wow. So Wilkes and Diamond were the last ever AWA tag team champions. Well, that's one of the reasons probably nobody <laughs> would know this because it's it's dying days, like filming on a green screen AWA when they when they won these. Uh, but yes, the big boss man was of course Ray Trailer and Sergeant yeah. and and uh, Detective Crockett was apparently one of the detectives on Miami Vice. So like again, that makes me angry because they put a little bit of thought into that one. Yes, and they just completely phoned it in on the other ones. So, all right, that means we got nineteen out of twenty correct, um, which is still an A in my uh, if my uh, ass- assessment is correct. Yeah. And I think we have successfully uh, remembered some guys. We have, for sure. And uh, thankful that we've had that opportunity. <laughs> for sure, on this on this Thanksgiving. Is, is there a Frasier like, Thanksgiving episode? Like, there are, is. Are there several? There's one. I only really remember one standing out. And it's uh, Lil- Lilith, Frasier's ex-wife, played by the delightful B.B. Newworth. Mm-hmm. And their son, Frederick, come to Seattle to spend Thanksgiving there. But um, uh, Frazier and Lilith end up trying to get. Or no, maybe they're. In, let's see, maybe they're in Boston. I think maybe they're in Boston. Anyway, regardless, Frazier and Lilith spend the entirety of the episode trying to bribe uh, the headmaster of a private school to allow their child in the following year. And really they're just annoying him the entire time on Thanksgiving. <laughs> but do they invite him over for Thanksgiving? Uh, no, they crash his Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. That's better. But meanwhile at their house, 
uh, Niles is cook is preparing their own Thanksgiving, and like they come in and steal the food <laughs> to take to the other house because because they want to be making a good impression. And, uh-huh. and meanwhile, the guy who's cooking the food at the house is like puts the turkey in the oven and comes back to check on it. And there's no turkey in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> thinks he's totally yeah. thinks he's totally losing his mind. Uh, the parents are so wrapped up in uh, trying to bribe this uh, school principal or whatever that their their child is like walking into doors and <laughs> and uh, somebody gives the kid a bad haircut and oh, it's no. like and they're, and they're totally oblivious to it because they're so uh, self absorbed. Anyway, that's that's, that's a great A sitcom right there. It's it's a good episode. It's uh yeah. It's maybe not top 20, but it's top 50 out of 250 or whatever. Sure. Yeah. Well, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. <laughs> Until next time, everybody. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Merry Thanksgiving. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. All right. Well, the good news is I think it was pretty good. Yeah. I think for a show that had that I literally thought of this morning. (laughs) Yes. I think it went fine. (laughs) Yeah, my brain was uh, just not uh, working well enough to offer offer any suggestions. Well, that's an idea. That's one more idea than I have. (laughs) That's a good idea. All right. (laughs) All right, there we go. That's all we needed. We just, yeah. Because the framework is just, it's always remember guys. So yeah, whatever, whatever framing allows us to do that in a way that's enjoyable. Yeah. No, I had uh, the the weirdest first date of my life uh, last week. Please, please continue. Sure, sure. Um, so, but talking to the background, <laughs> a girl I am speaking with is a nurse who works overnights. So, uh, planning something has been a little bit difficult. What? So, uh, after a few weeks of of text texting uh she said she said she was off last weekend uh the saturday and the sunday i was like okay hey let's hang out she's like i i have to be home because i'm helping she lives with her sister and brother-in-law okay um and it's the brother-in-law's birthday weekend and she's helping her sister like cook food because they're the brother and the brother-in-law and sister are going to do like a Lord of the Rings marathon and mm. they're going to eat food like every couple of hours based on things in the movie. And uh, so she, she's like, I'm going to have to be home, but if you want to come to the house and hang out, like she wasn't going to be watching the movies with them. Right. So she's like, she has her own little apartment thing right. in the basement and, and she has sure. a stove down there. So she's like, you can just come hang out and we'll watch movies or whatever. And, yeah. Uh, so anyway, we head up that. So I head up there. That, so they live on a farm, as one might expect, if you're familiar with that area. Yeah. So I get there. Um. You know, we, you know, we meet, and I'm walking into her house, and she looks back to this pasture they have, uh, behind their house, and she says, and I quote, "Oh no, one of the alpacas has gotten loose." Uh. And I look, and uh, there is one alpaca that is standing there far, far off in the distance in the pasture, kind of like very nervous. And like, I don't know what the word is for the sound alpacas make, but they were making it a lot. I think apparently it's like when they're unhappy. So there's a brain alpaca. And uh, so they, so she runs in the house and gets the brother-in-law and sister out. And so they all go out into the pasture and the second alpaca thankfully comes back very quickly. Uh, it was like basically just over the fence into a, uh, a neighbor's yard. So the alpaca comes back and then they're like, they're showing, they go down to look at like, how did the alpaca get out? And they got out because the 
fence that was keeping them in in the back was like three fence posts and a piece of string along it. Sure. <laughs> Which I guess, I mean, a lot of, a lot of farm animals are dumb. So like if they walk into that string, that'll just like yeah. in their head, that's the same as like a 10 foot tie fence. Correct. But this alpaca figured it out and got out. So then I stand around in a pasture while two alpacas walk around me uh, while they put in additional fence posts and tie a second string across like the middle of all of them and put up chicken wire and uh, pile up some tree branches. This sounds like an hours long process. It was like 45 minutes. They, They were just, I mean, they were just like metal metal rods i wouldn't they weren't like big wooden fence posts but but still but yeah so i'm just kind of standing there and like i don't know what to say so (laughs) right so that's so after that we go into the house go downstairs we hang out and chat and then and we're you know getting to know each other and then like every 45 minutes to an hour she has to get up and go prepare (laughs) additional foods a medieval it. feast <laughs> right and like some of them are little things like one of them was a charcuterie board i don't i don't remember the scene in lord of the rings where there's a charcuterie board but i'm sure there's a scene with like cheese and meats in it so sure that's fine uh but then other times it's like a potato soup and a stew and then she's offering me these things because she's like we made a lot and i was like well there was only going to be three of you before you knew i was coming so i don't know why you made this much but right maybe that's just the um maybe you can only buy the ingredients for such a thing in that quantity so um if you want spiced lamb loin (laughs) you must buy at least four pounds of it correct how many hours are you in for at this point so so this is this is another side thing because in my opinion uh optimal first date is 90 minutes wow that's Uh, uh that's quick yeah, I just think it's good because it's a fact to me. First date is kind of a fact finding mission. Like, okay, do I like talking to this person at all? Sure. Are they a freak? <laughs> uh, you know, et cetera and so forth. So right. yeah, maybe ninety minutes to two hours. Two hours is fine. All right. But uh, it's like you have a con- can you hold a conversation with this person? Do they? You know, ha- is there any interest at all? And then you plan the second date, and the dates can get gradually longer as you go. I was there for, I got there at like 1130 and I think I left at like 530. So that's quite a long time. I broke, I broke my own record by like, by triplicate <laughs> or broke right. my own rule by, right. uh, by triplicate. Right. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the story. And then I drove home in the dark through the woods of, uh, <sighs> it's technically Baltimore County, but you know, uh, yeah. The wooded, the wooded areas of uh, of some of the country parts of Maryland. So, fantastic. I try to keep on keeping on.